Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So this is the third video of the Ad Coder DP series. So before starting this video, I'll highly recommend that you get back and watch my first two videos of this series. So this problem states that you'll be given one N and there will be N days. So you have three days over here and every day you can perform three tasks. Either it is swim or catch or homework. Like if you perform swim, you will get 10 points on the first day, 20 points on the second day 30 points on the third day if you perform catch you'll get 40 50 60 and similarly if you perform homework you'll get 70 80 90 so the problem is to maximize the number of points but there is a condition like if you are taking this 70 that means if you are doing a homework on the first day then on the next day you cannot do the homework that means if you have taken 70 on the first day next day you cannot take 80 that's not allowed so let's take 50 that means you did catch a bug on the second day so if you catch a bug on the second day so on the third day you cannot catch a bug yes you can do a homework or you can swim so let's swim on the third day so if you add the total point the total point makes it 210 so this is one of the combination the other possible combination that you could have done is possibly take 40 from the first day then you could have taken 80 and then 60 so 40 plus 80 plus 60 gives you 180 so you can try all the possible combinations just you need to keep in mind that if you're performing any certain task on a given day on the day before you should not have performed that task and in doing so you have to maximize this summation of the points and you must be thinking that it's an easy problem you greedily choose values like over here you chose 70 then you greedily then you cannot choose 80 so you greedily chose 50 so in the next step you cannot choose 60 so you greedily chose the greater of 30 and 90 and you got 210 so i'll show you a test case where greedy approach fails so if you take this example and greedily if you choose 50 for the first day that means you're taking this so on the next day you cannot take 100 so you will take the maximum of that that is 60 so the total number of points that you scored is 110 but what if i take 40 let's take 40 on the first day so on the next day if i take 100 so i'll get 140 so we can see that taking a greedy approach doesn't works so how do you approach such problems so what do you need to do at first is try out all the possible combinations so to try out all the possible combination what do you need to do is you have to write recursive code so once you've written the recursive code you know that Recursive code is exponential because you know if there are n elements and you're trying all the possible combinations So the complexity will be exponential in nature, which might not scale So the, so at the next step what you need to do is you got to memoize that recursive solution to convert it into a dynamic programming solution So let's perform the first step that is trying out all the possible combinations So if I would have given you only one day 10 40 70 so you could have said that maximum of 10 40 70 will be my answer because I have only one day so I can choose any of them So let's start by this step that on the first day you try to choose any of them So when we start we either take 10 we either take 40 or we either take 70 now What if I take 10 so what can I take at the next step now since I've taken 10 can I take 20? No, I cannot take so I can either take 50 or 80 so assume this is the zero day This is the first day and this is the second day so on the first day, I can either take 50 or I can either take 80 because I did this task on the first day. So on the next day, I cannot do this task because that is what the condition says. So I can only do 50 or 80. So I did 50 or 80. Now let's see what 40 can do. So since I've taken 40 and I'm on the first day, so can I take 50? No. So what are the possible steps that I can take from the first day? That is 20 and 80 they have taken 70 so what can you take on the first day so on the first day you cannot take 80 you can take 20 and 50 so let's take 20 and 50 now you've reached the last day so previous day you took 50 so that means you took this portion so can you take 60 no you cannot take so what are the possibilities that you can take you can either take 30 or you can either take 90 because 50 you took that means you perform the second task on the previous day so on the second day you cannot perform the second task you can only perform the first task or the third task so on the second day you cannot perform 90 you can only perform 30 
or 60. So if you have taken 20 and you are reaching the second day, so you cannot take 30. So you can only take 60 or you can take 90. Now if you have taken 80 and reach the second day, you cannot take 90. So you can only take 30 or 60. Now if you have taken 20 and reach the second day, you can only take 60 and 90. If you have taken 50 and reach the second day, you can only take 30 or 90. So you can see that you have taken all days that is the 0 day, the first day that and the second day if I am considering the 0 indexing of days. So I have tried all the possible combinations. So how will you find the maximum answer? So to find that you need to see which chain gives you the maximum answer. So if you carefully notice 70, 50 and 90, this chain gives you 210 which is the maximum point that you can get. Yes, there are other chains like 40, 80, 60. This gives you 180. So this is how you try out all the possible combination and see which chain is giving you the maximum answer. But let's see how can you compute it using the recursive code. So for that, you have to understand how do we get the answer. So let's see. So the next step, you have to write the recursive code because we have thought of a solution which tries out all the possible combination. So before writing the recursive code, you have to understand how do we compute the answer. So if you are standing at the last day and you have an option of taking 30 or 90, so you will take 90. Similarly, if you are standing on the second day and you have an option of taking 30 or 60, you will take 60. So you took 50 and 90. So what is the total over here? The total over here is 140. So over here you took 80 and you know that from 2 you can take 60. So the total over here you get is 140. So if I ask you standing at 1, what is the best possible way to go? So you can say that as 140 because either of them are equal. Now 140 plus 10 gives you 150. So I know if I start taking 10, the maximum value that I can generate is 150. That's very obvious if you take 10, at the next step if you take 50 and at the next step if you take 90 you will get 150 or if you take 10 then at the next step you take 80 and then you take 60 then also you get 150. So you got 150 by taking 10. Similarly you can compute for the other subtrees also. So once you have computed this tree you can see that you are getting 150 if you take 10 you are getting 180 if you are taking 40 and you are getting 210 if you are taking 70 at the start. So which is the maximum that you can take? That is 210. So this is the way you got your answer. So I have figured out how can we compute our answer. And the next step that we need to do is figure out how can we write a recursive code. Now let's see how can you write a recursive code. So if you are standing at the 0th position. So initially let's take 0, 0. So we know that we are standing at the 0th index and previously we haven't performed any task because 0th day is the first day. So let's assume this is the first day, this is the second day, this is the third day. I'm taking one indexing for the tasks and I'm taking 0th indexing for the days. So this is 0, 0. Now if I am taking 10, so what does that mean? I am taking the first day. So if you are moving to 1, so let's say it as 1, 1. So if you are taking 40, that means you have taken the second task and I am moving to 1. So that means I have moved to 1 and previously I took the second task. And now if you are moving to 1 and previously performed 70, that means you performed the third task. Over here, it will be 2 comma. Now 50 is nothing but the second task. So you can write 2 comma 2. So over here, it performed 80, that means the third task. So it will be 2 comma 3. Similarly, it is taking 20. So I can write 2 comma 1 over here 2 comma 3. So you can notice that if you are standing at the first day and you have done a second task, the next tasks are 1 and 3. So similarly, you can write for all the other portions. So what are the transitions that we noticed? So the transitions are very easy. So if you are standing at a given day and you have 0, so that means you are standing at the 0 day and you haven't performed any task. So what does that mean? You can move to the next day and you can perform the first task. Or you can move to the next day, you can perform the second task. Or you can move to the next day, you can perform the third task. Similarly, if you are standing at a given day and if you have performed the first task on the previous day, the transitions are day plus 1, comma 2 and day plus 1, comma 3. 
similarly for 2 you can have 3 and 1 and for 3 you can have 1 and 2 so we know if we are moving to the next day and we are performing the first task on the current day the summation will be nothing but a of day of 1 so we keep on adding and we to compute the answer what we are doing is whatever transitions we were calling we took the maximum of that that is the reason we wrote 90 over here and eventually it got added up so we will take the maximum of all the transitions that are happening so this is how you write the recursive code so currently this recursive code will have a exponential complexity because we are trying out all the possible combinations but let's try to write the recursive code and once we have done that we can memorize that recursive code and then we can convert it into a dynamic programming so let's perform the second step that is writing the recursive code so initially i declared everything globally and at the next step i took n as the input and then i took the points that we will get if we perform the first task second task or the third task on a given day so i am referring zeroth indexing for the number of days and one indexing for the task performed and then i call the function 0 comma 0 because that is the initial thing that we did that is 0 comma 0 so we go over there to the function that is day comma flag so day indicates the day at which we are and flag indicates that what is the task that we did previously so ignore line number 9 as of now and see what we are doing so we know if flag is 0 we had three transitions to perform so the transitions would be day plus 1 comma 1 day plus 1 comma 2 day plus 1 comma 3 that is what we talked about and we know that since we are performing the first task on the given day so so the points added will be a of day one or a of day two or a of day three similarly if flag is one we can only perform two and three transitions and we can add the points to them and we can similarly do for flag equal to equal to two and flag equal to equal to three and in doing so whichever transition gives us the maximum we store it so that is why we are taking a max of every one and once we have done that we can easily return it and if we notice in our recursive function when did our code end when we reached n because we reached the last day n and we didn't have anything to pick so anytime we reach n we have performed the combination and we have performed a given task on every day so we will return zero so this is how the recursive code will look like so now let's understand how do we memorize the dynamic programming solution so our second step is done that is writing the recursive code now let's understand how do we memorize the recursive code into a dynamic programming code so if we check out so if we check out what are the states the states are day and flag so the possible value of day is n and the possible value of flag is 0 1 2 and 3 so at max we can have 4 and at max we can have n so we need a n cross 4 dp to memorize it but now why do we memorize it understand now realize we have a state over here that is 2 and 2 so this was not previously visited so assume this was previously stored as minus 1 now we have computed the answer for 2 2 so the answer is 90 so we will replace it by 90 so we know that 2 comma 2 has an answer of 90 so when you are trying out all the possible combination we come back again to 2 comma 2 and eventually this time 2 comma 2 is not stored as minus 1 it is stored as 90 so do we need to compute for this again now this is a small tree assume it had plentiful of trees beneath it so do we need to pre-compute it no because i know the answer is 90 so i can simply return 90 over here without pre-computing similarly if you see 2 comma 3 has been computed over here 60 and we are again getting the same state so this is where dynamic programming comes into picture it memorizes your answer such that if you revisit that state again you can simply return this value without pre-computing that state so we took n equal to 3 and we saw that there were so many overlapping substructures so if we check out the constraint the value of n is 10 to the power 5 so imagine how many overlapping sub problems will be there so this is where memorization comes in and we can memorize our solution to convert it into a dynamic programming code and this is the states that we will be requiring n into 4 because at max day can be n and at max flag can be 4 0 1 2 3 so how do you memorize the solution so we know at max we can have int dp of this and 4 so whenever you return so you know you have computed the answer for the state so what you do is before returning you store the answer so you have stored the answer you know that since you have computed the answer for this day flag if any time you come back to day flag so you do not need to perform all these combinations instead you know the answer that is stored in dp of day flag you can simply return it 
and these many tasks will not be done these many recursive calls will not be happening and initially what you can do is you can initialize dp with minus one that means everyone is stored as minus one so the time complexity boils down to n into four so this is all about the video now let's talk about connecting if you want to connect me over linkedin this is my profile if you want to join our telegram channel the link is in the description if you have liked the video press the like button if you have disliked the video press the dislike button if you are new to my channel do not forget to subscribe and to press the bell icon